Hello, hello, happy Wednesday. I am so glad to see people here already. Oh my goodness, Michelle, Jackie. Hi, Laura. Are you new? If so, welcome. If you're a secret squirrel, welcome again, Kathy. And Victoria, Sue Brown is here and says, boo, she's already ready for Halloween. Hey, everybody, hope you are doing awesome. Make sure you are in live chat and not top chat so you don't miss anything. I am really jazzed to be here today. Let's change the cameras around. There we go. And I, hey, Andrea. Hey, Philippa. Joanne. Oh my goodness. What a full house. Sue Fiber Art. Oh my goodness. Welcome everybody. So let me tell you what's going on in, in Susan land in my brain. <laughs> Hi, Margaret. Good early morning to you. Hi, Angie. Oh my goodness. What a wonderful full house. So I got this, the bottom done and I learned some things. <laughs> Isn't it a great blue? It's from my, uh, this was an old sheet that I had dyed when I was emptying out my blue paints. Hey, Paul. Good. Is it morning, afternoon? I don't know what my time frames to South Africa are completely gone. So what it must be, it's nighttime for you, right? It's like going on midnight. Is that right? So I, I made the bottoms with these coiled strips and I, I purposely did not cover it with, you know, cover rope with it, but I realized last night that there's not a lot of weight to this. So I'm hoping it will hold things up. Hey, Marissa, how are you doing? Welcome. I think you might be new, at least new to me seeing everything here. So I don't know if it's going to have enough weight. So it might be that when I get everything else together, I might have to put some weight on the bottom, like maybe with a, I don't know, a cane bottom or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out. Thursday morning for Philippa and Margaret. Okay. 2100 for you, Paul. Okay. That's what I thought it was evening for you. So what I decided to do is I was going to stop. I didn't want to make it too much bigger on the bottom. And I held aside four strips on this. And I'm thinking I might make, I might make cordage. Okay, here's what I got left. I've got knots that I had done in the same fabric and I'd already decided I was going to use this fabric to come up the sides. Hey, Susan, happy Wednesday to you. 6 a.m. in Australia on Thursday, right, Margaret? And what I discovered when I was doing the bottom is it was really fiddly not having the rope to go around it. So I decided I was going to make cordage. And then this fabric, it's like some weird, hey, Leah, who is in Vancouver. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, my goodness. All those wonderful people. I love seeing you here. This stuff, it's like some polyester nylon combo something. It's shiny. It's slippery. It's thready. And I knew it was going to be a pain to do the coiling with that. So I decided to make cordage out of it. It's also a pain to do the cordage. <laughs> But that's okay. That's what I'm going to do. I did this much last night and I have a headache this morning because my husband, poor guy, had to get up at 530 this morning and I never went back to sleep. So I have got a headache from lack of sleep, the Excedrin migraines not working. I decided cordage was a good thing to do today because I don't have to concentrate much. So what I'll do after I get all the cordage made. Oh, and that was the other thing. I couldn't rip this evenly because of the weird material it is. So the thinner pieces I'm doing first so that when I get my ball done, um, I will pull it up that way. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, so Marissa is new here. Well, welcome, Marissa. We are so glad you are here. Yeah, I thought the colors worked really well together. And the thoughts I had, okay, I'm going to coil this coming up. But since I do have some of the knots, I didn't want to knot everything. I could make cordage out of this and have like a couple rows or I could wrap the knots so I had a little bit showing but I think I'm probably gonna go hey Terry 
I think I'm going to maybe make cordage out of these as well. And I'm just, this is just going to be an experiment. This is another learning experience. The whole idea, okay, the Susan plan, which is always subject to change, is that when I get this thing done, then I want to be able to, um, whoops, lost my other piece here. I want to be able to add like some shells and driftwood and beachy kind of things, maybe some net hanging from it. That's the plan. Um, I had already started this cordage last night. Let me show you on a short piece. So for those of you that don't know cordage, what happens if I wrap the two together and then make knots? These two together, I could absolutely make knots on there, but I kind of like the, I, I don't know, I, coiling is very relaxing to me, or I'm sorry, cordage is very relaxing to me, and I do have these knots. So I might get partway done and decide I just want to make more knots. Um, all of it just takes time. Just takes time. Okay, if you don't know how to make cordage, oh, the light and the dark blue. Ah, I could do that. That's a good idea, Sue. So I could make more knots on here. Let's just give Sue's idea a little try here. So see, I could start making more knots on here and probably be just like a little half hitch something. Hey, mouse, how's the foster dog doing? So yeah, that, that is something to play with. I will have to ponder that idea. Maybe what I would probably do is I would make knots in the light blue and then I could twist them. But um, those of you that were in the Zoom yesterday, remember we were talking about how to make holes in a vessel. And so what I'm thinking, okay, so here's one that's just completely coiled out of cordage is if I have knots and I'm going this back and forth. Hey, Fiona, you have a mug of tea to try and stay awake. Hopefully your medication has evened out and gotten adjusted to it. Um, I don't know. I think it'll be fun to kind of, ooh, I kind of like that too. I'll just, I'm going to play with it, but I need the cordage first. So if you don't know how to make cordage, it's really easy. You just, and you can do it with fabric, you can do it with plant materials, um, you can do it with scrap threads, which is what this is made out of. And you just, you want to start with an uneven piece. I'm, I'm doing this with just a short thing, but you don't want to start folded in half because you want your joins to end differently. And I may end up doing a new cordage video. I do have one on there that says something about making cordage with threads, but you're just going to twist Oh, Susan stop, stopped in to say hi, and now she's off to the grocery store to get fruit for her granddaughter. Well, that's a good reason. Hey, Lori. So you just keep twisting it in opposite directions until it starts to twist on itself. Yeah, the cordage with the light and the dark blue, I might do that too. And then once it starts to twist on itself, just because you've been twisting it so much, it's going to make this little knot. And when you have that, that's what you grab hold of with your thumb. And then you can start doing what I'm going to do here. Sue also agrees with Margaret, cordage with the light and the dark blue. Well, that might be something. I only have four long strips of the light blue left since I made the bottom out of all the light blue. So we'll see. Oh, Terry's been having login issues and no chat box. Well, that's no fun. Every day is slightly different with my foster dog, but luckily she's fairly mellow. That's good. And if I'm working with plant fibers, I would soak the plant fibers in water a little bit because it makes it easier to work with. Since I'm working with fabric, I'm not going to soak the fabric, but I do like to have something here to keep my fingers damp and it's just twisting away and twisting back. Now the nice thing about working on cordage, yeah, Kathy, the blue, this is just such a beautiful color of material. It's just hideous to work with. So I just figure let's, let's make some cordage up and see what we can do with it. But I don't have to look at what I'm doing until 
I get to the joins so I can follow the chat and we can talk about what you guys have been doing. I want to know who's doing what. Is anybody making Halloween stuff? Are you guys already thinking about doing Thanksgiving and Christmas items? I know Terry has been making Christmas ornaments. Need to have you um, post some of those in the group. We had such a fun Zoom session yesterday. Really enjoyed seeing everybody there. And if you don't know about the Zoom sessions, um, maybe Gail or Terry will post. Next week, we have another one at a different time frame. Margaret doesn't do Halloween. Gail says not Halloween, but I'm doing a little owl. Let's see if I move the camera. Oops, wrong way. This way. There we go. When we lived in San Jose, the only thing we would do on Halloween was be open for the trick-or-treaters, but we don't get trick-or-treaters out here in the country. Sue says, I have pieces cut to make seven Halloween pillowcases for my daughter and her family. Oh, Corinne said, uh, we're moving home, so just stop by to say hi. Hi, Corinne. You will be home soon. Philippa says, we don't do Halloween here. Yeah. Thank you, Gail. Halloween's not a big thing in Australia. Interesting. Victoria says, not doing Halloween, but I'm working on simple small makes for a craft fair myself and my mom will be vending at in December. What are your favorite things to be making for the craft fair, um, Victoria? I know you got a whole lot of suggestions in the group. Kathy says, no Halloween, about to start Christmas. Is Oh, I was going to bring the other... I'm glad you mentioned the vessel. Just a minute here. I know that um, somebody asked me, is this the vessel you mean, Lori? And yes, it is. I can PM you later about it. Um, somebody asked me how I did the bottom. So I wanted to, to tell them about that. And I can't remember. Maybe I don't remember. I won't even pretend to remember. Um, so what I did and because it was measurement, okay, I will PM you later, Lori, with the details about it. Um, I had to figure out circumference measurements and circles, not a good thing. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Oh, Fiona says not Halloween, but my sister has requested new Christmas stockings for her boys, 40 and 38. They'd be quilted then. Oh, please. That that's going to be wonderful. So thank you here. Let me, let me show this one off a little more first. Okay. So this one, I just had so much fun doing the embroidery on this. There are some things I figured out that I would do differently, but that's okay because that's what every project teaches us what we're going to go forward and do differently the next time, right? So this started with a long strip of wool that I was stitching on, and I knew I was going to stitch it to this other piece. Then what I did, and you don't have to do this, but I decided I want it to be just a little stronger. So I did some heat and bond um, just with some cotton material to the inside, and then it kind of protects the stitches. Gift tags. Okay. <laughs> At the moment, Victoria says, bundles of gift tags. I've been cutting out small tag shapes with the tag punch using a Christmas theme punched in the bottom and adding twine. That's perfect. So then when you want to do the bottom, this has got some cardboard. And I just cut circles. This was the first idea I had. I wanted to shred it so I would have like that wonderful frayed edge. However, this must have a little bit of polyester in it so it did not shred. So I, but I did the same thing on this thing here. I just covered a piece of cardboard with fabric on both sides. And then I just stitched it really close. And then, here, let, let me grab. All right. So then what I did, whoops, I'm going to poke myself with this needle if I don't. Marissa is working on my butterfly mini quilt and trying to do a little basket along as I'm watching you now. I realize I've done it all wrong. Oh, no, you've just done it differently, not wrong, because who knows, maybe I did it wrong. To me, this was the most fiddly part, okay? I had the piece of wool that I was going to make the vessel out of, and then I had my cardboard, and you just sort of start stitching 
at the bottom and you just keep going around and stitching around. And then you have to come up the sides. So you can see where I came up the sides here. And luckily it was big enough that I could get my hands down in there to stitch it. Now I have seen vessels where they have put this on like a drop cloth or a cotton or something. And the bottom is just kind of gathered, folded in. So it's just a very soft bottom and that would work as well. But it's just kind of fiddling with it a little bit as you, as you go around. And what I was going to do on this one, once I got it all the way around with this, was then stitch some other stuff at the bottom. And I decided that simple worked better on that one. I hope that makes sense. What do you think you did wrong, Marissa? Because I bet you didn't do it wrong. I bet you just did it different. Good morning, Sharon. How are you doing today? So yeah, I just, I have a lot of cordage. I'm guessing it's going to take me the rest of the week to turn all of this into cordage, but that's okay because I have nothing else on the calendar after I finish this live. So I'm going to sit and hope the headache goes away and do cordage. And then tomorrow I've got a couple of appointments. So I'm just going to take it with me. But I do think it will be one, it'll go a lot easier to make the sides of this with the cordage or knots as opposed to messing with the fabric. So it was good for me to do the bottom like that because I realized why they covered them with rope. But it just, it was just too perfect. And I didn't, I don't do perfect anymore. Hello, Barbie. Welcome back from your cruise. It looked like you had a wonderful time except for your poor friend that, that got hurt. So who else is working on something? I'm glad to hear several people are working on vessels of different kinds. I want to explore doing more vessels. Um, I, I'd like to see if I could do some that don't take quite so long, but I don't know. Maybe I just need to get the paint out and just paint some fabric and maybe piece it together and do one that way. And all I'm doing on the cordage is I'm twisting away from me and I'm putting the other one underneath. I twist away and I tuck this one underneath. And that's all I'm doing. It's it's such a wonderful, you didn't do the cordage before. I just, oh, but that's totally fine, Marissa. That's all I did here. See, this isn't cordage. This is just fabric that I just stitched, blanket stitched around here. So see, you did exactly that. I just changed my mind because I was going to do the same thing with this fabric coming up. And I just changed my mind and decided to do cordage. Barbie zip line. Oh my goodness. I am not brave enough to do that. There's a place right here in town that does it through the Redwoods and no way, no how. So see Marissa, you didn't do anything wrong at all. And I think I would do mine that way, twisting the scraps and stitching it. Cause that's what I did in the video that I posted. If you saw that, I just twisted the, the scraps. Um, I think if I was going to do it that way again, I would probably cut scraps of fabric about an inch and a half to two inches wide. No worries, Sharon. I'm just always glad you're here. Oh, you're not home yet. Hopefully leaving Sunday. Oh my, are you with your friend that got hurt? Or I mean, are you staying longer because of that? Sharon, I'm impressed that you're up early at all anyways. I just, I don't know how you do it. I don't do early. That's why I have a headache today. <laughs> well, my problem with early is I can't ever go back to sleep. My husband, If I was the one getting up at 530 in the morning, my husband would crash right back to sleep again. Michelle is working on slow stitch clusters. You know, I, I cleaned off the island twice with the idea to start clusters because I'm completely sold out of clusters. And I was going to lay everything out. Barbie says, I must be stupid because I thought zip lining was gently going through the jungle to see it. I missed the zip word. Yeah. See, I, I don't do roller coasters, so that would never, ever work for me. Yeah, Victoria, I only 
ever see six o'clock in a one six o'clock in a day and it's not the morning one yep 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 sue sue brown agrees with you she says i don't do early either i'm impressed too <laughs> margaret's not doing much art at the moment, art-wise, a bit fiddling here and there. Been thinking about projects to do soon. It's spring, so been concentrating on planting stuff, seeds mostly. Ah, yeah. And for us, we're you know we're into fall, and that's when I start thinking about planting because I don't plant in the spring. I plant before the rains come, and I do have a few places that I could actually get some native plants in this year. Yeah, that's you did absolutely right, Marissa. Kathy says, I like my feet on the ground. Wouldn't do a zip line. Yep. Margaret says, I planted some potatoes in bags. First time to grow potatoes. They are purple ones and they are coming up now. How exciting. I bought the bags to plant potatoes and then ended up selling off the bags because I never got around to it. Oh, okay. So you cruised to where the class reunion was. Got it. I remember the class reunion. I've mixed emotions about that. I am peopled out, but I would like to see a few friends that are coming in. My graduating class was 54 people. So it's a small group. Wow. Well, I hope you can have a wonderful time. All right. So I have to join something here. And since I know I'm going to be stitching this together, I'm not worried about how perfect The join is going to be, if there's little loops sticking out, that's fine. I'm already envisioning hanging things from it. Sharon says, that's fun, Margaret. Spring saw me start on my reorganization. I don't know what it is about spring, whether it got me all, let's get organized again. But it got me all, let's get organized again this year. Yeah, there's something about that. Although I organized myself so well that I lost I had a whole bunch of bland, uh, black balls of fiber, a uh, fabric that was all ready to be made into a vessel. And I have no idea where I put it. Hey, Journey, how are you doing? <laughs> Barbie says, still looking for an outfit that makes me hot, but not hoochie. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm already, my son and his fiance haven't even set the wedding date yet. And I'm already freaking out about finding a mother of the groom dress. Hoping that I will have lost even more weight by then since whenever they do that. Terry said, I usually do my studio cleaning in January. That's kind of nice. And after the holidays, right? Margaret said, yes, Sharon, spring weather does that to me too. Unfortunately, since I had COVID, I can't do much in a day as I get fatigue and my lung capacity is much less than it was before. Frustrating. Oh. Yeah, I know. What is it, Sharon? We put those things in a safe place and then we never find them again. I did find a whole lot of other black fabric, but I decided, you know, I could just put all of that in one container and leave it in the garage and I'm not going to worry about it until... Um, I finished some of these other projects. I really want to start the thing with all the green fabrics that I put out on the island. And I just I have these ideas. And Sue did her, um, she shared her forest floor piece. And then Anne shared the beginnings of her mushroom piece. And so it's got me all fired up. And I've got a couple Pinterest boards that are just filled with great foresty ideas with textiles and fibers. But I think I just need to do a lot of experimentation and so I'm kind of trying to think of things like the vessels and finishing projects that I can do in the lives because some of the experiments I, I'm happy to share, but I don't even know where I'm going, you know, so I kind of need to play around first off camera. After holiday crafting my house, I bet because you make so much for all your consignment venues, Terry. Terry has got angel wings in her shop now. Those of you that are making Christmas ornaments. Oh, my goodness. They are beautiful. Angie said, I am famous for organizing myself right into a mess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Journey opened an Etsy shop trying to get together some things to go in it. Awesome. Journey, make sure you, you know, tell us the name so that we can find it. And Gail and Terry can add you to their master list. 
Sharon says, Margaret had no idea you had COVID sending healing vibes your way for speedy recovery. Anne is here. Hey, Anne. I love, I didn't get a chance to comment yet, but I love that you pulled out your uh, mushroom piece. I can't wait to see what you're going to do with it. Wow. This is nice having cordage. I don't miss any of the chat. I can just be watching chat all the time. <laughs> Well, Journey, you have got, I've seen some of your art and I'm really excited that you've got the, the Etsy shop opening. So you've got like the long COVID issues, huh, Margaret? That stinks. Sue Fiber Art says, well done, Journey. I realized the other day my Etsy shop is 10 years old. Wow. Congratulations, Sue. Wow. Ah, so Journey's shop is called Journey's Scraps. Maybe Terry or Gail can go take a look at it. You wonder what you're going to do with it too. Have you seen Amy Gross's um, beautiful landscape kind of 3D sculptural things? She creates these like, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, ecospheres, I guess. Everything is with textile and fabric. She does not use any actual things, any like, things from nature. I, I'm, I'm going to post some inspiration things later today. Mouse said, I went to a neighborhood event recently and was really surprised I didn't meet one person who took COVID seriously. Oh, gosh. Mouse, considering that we live in the same area, that's so frustrating. People wonder why we don't want to go um, out in places. We don't want to meet friends at restaurants or things. That's why. Oh, Angie, you too. She says, you're not alone, Margaret. I have long COVID also. So annoying. Yikes. Sharon says, Margaret, I've heard it can linger a long time for some. I hope you bounce back soon. Fingers crossed the spring weather helps. Yeah. Oh, Mouse, that's that's so sad. She said, I was the youngest one there and the only one who, who was or did take any precautions. Ah, Joanne said, what did I do with the loop with the cordage? I didn't understand that part. Let me go back to it. So when I get this loop, that's just my beginning. And then I'm just going to do the same thing that I'm doing here. I'm just going to twist away and then under. Twist away and then turn the under. That's all it is. Twist away and under. So Sue Fiber Art is Sue Foley Fiber Art on Etsy. Okay, good. Good to know. Margaret says it, uh, Victoria said, Margaret, it sucks, doesn't it? Uh, I got it last November, was plagued with cough right up until the end of April, May this year. My mom still has long COVID and she had it in December. Oh no. Uh, okay. So Terry got journeys up there. Um, so Sue Foley's you can't find, let's see here. Let me see what I can find real quick here. Um, give me one second here. Nope, I don't see it right easy either. I was thinking maybe I could pull it up real quick. Whoops. I went out of my own screen. Oh, look at that. Gail, look at you. Ah, could um, Terry or Gail get Ann's web shop, website shop instead of her YouTube link? Thank you, Gail. That's why you really value the Zoom sessions we have. I know, Margaret, they're awesome. God, I just, and I heard from so many people after yesterday's session. Oh, twisting away and under. Yeah. It's just away and under, away and under. And honestly, you get to the point where you just don't even have to think about it. What are the measurements of the vessel I'm making today? Let's see here. Let's get a 
ruler. So this circle is about seven inches diameter. Oh gosh, Angie said I get sick for two to three days every six weeks or so. So it's about seven inches in diameter and I have no idea how big it's going to be. I'm just going to use up all my stuff. <laughs> I'm going to make all the cordage and then I'll use it up. Thank you, Victoria. Mouse said, because my peer group is more sciencey, I was pretty shocked at the misinformation and conspiracy theories of my neighbors. You know, I cease to be shocked anymore, Mouse. It's really sad. Doesn't she make beautiful art, Journey? Yeah, COVID is still isolating for so many. You're right, Sharon. It's strange to be out and about now and to see few masks being used as things seem to be bouncing back. I'm not too proud to mask up. I know, us neither. And we have, I hope people are getting their flu shots. We were just talking about when we were going to get our flu shots. I'm going to get mine as soon as possible. My husband's trying to stagger his flu and his extra coat. He's got to wait till the end of this month because he got his last COVID. What is the next search for? Um, Anne, you you posted Anne, or somebody posted Anne's web, or YouTube and she wants to get her website up there with her shop because she's got a, a new shop. And pipe up um, so that they know which Anne we're talking about here. I think we have a couple. All right, time to join. Oh, Leah got her flu shot this morning. Hi, Soto's Creative Corner. Do you want to be called Soto or do you want to be called something else? Welcome. I saw your comment just before I came on. She's new to the channel. You enjoy watching and learning. Well, we are so happy to have you here. So happy. Let's see. Let's get another piece. Victoria was, whoops, wait a minute here. Uh, was due to get my flu shot last week, but had to cancel due to having a really bad cold two days before. Oh, yikes. There we go. Fiber Designs by Anne. Okay, so if you can get her website instead. Mouse said, I'm so used to wearing a mask, I forgot that I'm wearing it. At first, I couldn't figure out why my neighbors were saying weird things to me. <laughs> Soto is fine. Okay, good. So, um, Anne, is your website listed on your YouTube channel? So if they go to the About page on your YouTube channel. So now one of the things you want to make sure when you're starting cordage is that you, you want to have your joins happening at different places. Whoops. Sharon missed her flu shot last year with the COVID shots. It just didn't factor in a timely fashion. Then it was too late. Fortunately, I was isolating through most of our winter. Yeah. Okay. So if somebody goes to Fiber Designs by Ann, goes to her YouTube channel, go to the About page, you can get her website. Sue said, two of my daughters have the flu and feel worse than when they had COVID. Get jabs ASAP. Yeah. Ugh. Yikes. Okay. So I've got, I'm ready to do a join here. I've got this short piece and I'm just going to lay another piece over it. And I'm going to come a little bit past where I'm holding with my thumb. And that's all it is. I'm just going to keep twisting until that join is there. There we go. There's Ter Terry's got Anne's website and she's got a brand new shop with some of her beautiful art quilts up there. She hand paints her fabrics and makes quilts and makes all kinds of things. So, uh, beautiful work. Definitely need to go check it out. Sharon, you've had the flu twice now? Yikes, that's not fun. It's okay. It looks like Terry got your website and the shop should be on the website, right? <laughs> it's a challenge, right? It is a challenge. All right. And the one thing about this stuff, it's so thready. It just gets, I think it's got to be nylon in it. But that's okay. 
So I'm trying to decide, let me show you this again while I'm twisting on this piece. If I should finish it as a cover, which was what it was originally intended to be, or should I turn it into a tall, narrow vessel? Gail said, I got my flu shot and the most recent booster, hopefully somewhat covered for now. The floating hummingbird on Anne's site, or is that on Sue's site? Where did you see it, Victoria? We want to know. Yeah, my in-laws got both their shots at the same time. I was not quite brave enough to do that. So I got my, my recent COVID one. My husband is behind me because I had to wait until he was old enough to get the uh, booster. Tall vessel. That's kind of what I'm drawn to is a tall vessel too. Yeah, and I think I'm going to add a whole bunch of little sparkly beads. I need to get educated about beads. Yeah, it just kind on Anne's site. Okay. Ah, oh, there we go. We got Soto's channel up there. You are quick, Terry. Thank you for that. You know, I just, um, I don't know. I was, I got really tired after getting the COVID shot and my arm was so sore and I don't think it's a, a coincidence or I don't think it's the same thing. I think it's just a coincidence, but the broken blood vessel in my eye happened like three days after my COVID booster. Margaret says, I am due for my booster. I'm hoping it will be able to get the new vaccine that is supposed to be better for the new strains of COVID. Hopefully that they're available to you there. Soda, that's something we do here. People show up in the chat and my amazing moderators, Tara Fitzpatrick and Gail, whose last name is suddenly escaping me, um, they will share your connections. They will share your YouTube channels, your Etsy shops, because we are a supportive group. This channel isn't about me. It's about building community. Maybe because there's another Anne here, you can call me Fiber Anne. All right, Fiber Anne. <laughs> Journey says, Anne, I love the leaf on the stick. Such a flurry of searches. Yes, I know. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, I think a tall vessel would be really cool on this, right? Just kind of, and I want to add a whole bunch more of these little tiny sparkly seed beads. Let's see. Sharon said, I hope you keep it that way, Margaret. It took me almost six months to start to feel normal again after the fluke. Nasty cough and exhaustion wouldn't leave. Oh, my goodness. Joanne said, Ann, I took a peep at your shop. I love that you have altered objects. I like to alter things too. That's right. You guys share an interest there. Mouse said, I remember going to a seminar with data from different communities and they casually pointed out one outlier community where death was high. They said that community generally doesn't get flu shots. Wow. That is good to know. Yeah, let's, let's all get ourselves protected because we have lots of creating to do, right? We have so much creating to do. I agree, Margaret. It's, Sharon, sounds like you had the long flu. I think you will have a few more subscribers after this live Soto. Like I said, we tend to support one another. If you're on Facebook, we invite you to join us over there in the Facebook group. It's just a real supportive community. an artist friend of mine in San Jose um, has been altering mannequins in you know, various you know, forms, whether they're the heads, the half bodies, what have you, with really interesting jewels and fabric and uh, no, no stitching, but just covering with fabric and stuff. Very interesting things. Fiber Ann says, thanks all for checking out my shop. Love the altered objects. Mouse said, I was pretty surprised both that scientists already knew there was an effect and that people outside of science didn't. Yes, it's very interesting. I mean, I, I suppose a lot of things, it's about the way people are, um, 
are raised, you know, in generations before, you know, our, our parents or grandparents thought things differently. But yeah, when there's science, I don't know, I tend to believe science, but that's me. I know, Anne, I can't wait. Now that having seen so much of the stuff you do, I can't wait to see what you do with all that jewelry. I was so happy to have it go to a good home. I kept wanting to do something with it. I had some mannequin hands that I wanted to do, and I realized it just wasn't going to ever get to it. Ooh, Joanne said, I just started a new Pinterest page of altered mannequins. You should share the page with us. Share it in the group so we can all go check it out. Margaret's going to go make herself another cuppa. Nice. Mouse said this was before COVID and people being especially aware of seasonal vaccination. So I went and immediately told my friends to get the flu shot. Yeah. I know I had to convince my son and I, it was interesting. Of course, flu shots, they weren't a big thing, you know, when my, when I was raising my kids. And so when his adult had to convince him that, you know, he really needed to do this. Hello, Jessica from Mississippi. You made it to a live. I am so glad to see you here. Absolutely love the vessel you posted over on my art page on Facebook. Gorgeous. How are you doing today? Fiber Ann says, Joanne, yes. How great. Please share. Share. We want to see. We all get so inspired by what inspires everybody else. I mean... I spend probably half an hour to an hour, okay, maybe sometimes more, <laughs> every night before I go to sleep, uh, either adding to my Pinterest, usually adding to my Pinterest boards, which is crazy because some of the boards have like, you know, 1,500 things on them. But when I'm, I'm in the mood for inspiration, I just look at all those pictures and read about those artists. I love reading about the artistic process. Lori, before I forget, if I forget when we get offline or maybe just send me a message, either email or Facebook about the vessel so that I don't forget, because sometimes I, I go offline and I totally forget about it. Hey, Barbara, you made it. How was Soul Collage today? <laughs> ah, Joanne says, thank you. More, I'll be the one to say it today. Thumbs up for Susan. And Terry says, more likes, please. Thank you both. 32 people here. Wow. Secret squirrels. Hello, hello. Barbara says, Sharon, so lovely to see you yesterday. Yeah, it was a great Zoom. It was a bit of a, a mus mushy one there towards the end. And I just loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Thank you, Lori. I just know me. I get sidetracked. <laughs> Or I crash, you know, the adrenaline crash after the live. What was your prompt today, Barbara? It was wonderful today. I found a great picture of an antique love seat in red. Ooh. Yeah, Michelle, it's just so much inspiration there, isn't it? Ah, so it'll, okay, I'll let you in as soon as I get offline here. Glad you joined the group. I know, Fiber Ann, I am impressed too with how much some people get done. Don't worry, Terry. Between the two of you, you guys have everything so covered. I know the Zooms are amazing. You guys are rock stars to support one another like that. I had some amazing messages offline afterwards about it and... I got all teary-eyed all over again. <laughs> Sue says, Pinterest is my usual lunchtime activity. Yeah, it just, um, you know, and you fall down the rabbit hole. And then you got to be careful because then they start recommending all these things in one genre. And you're like, well, no, I want more of this other stuff. <laughs> Sharon says, it's so lovely to get to meet you all and learn more about what you all do. So much talent here. I know. And the Zooms, it just brings another level to it all, right? Barbara says, we just let images come to us. So mine started with the love seat. Then I saw an abstract of three live pears and mine are all ripe now. And then a background of a woman greeting the dawn outdoors. Ooh, I bet that led some great ideas. 
Soto said, I think by learning from others, we become that much more creative and better at our craft. Absolutely. You know, because we take what we learn from them and we put our own spin on it because we can never do it exactly like everybody else, right? We're all going to put our own spin on it. Oh, Gail, my goodness. She said, I'm a little distracted today. My sister had major surgery this morning and it took five hours of surgery. I hope that she is coming out of it the other side. Okay, Barbara, yes, when you scan it, put it in the group. Mouse says, Sharon, what was the talent spread? As in some were sewers, some were journalers. That is a great question. Everybody's sending you and your sister lots of love, Gail. Let's see. So we had, gosh, I don't know. Sharon, can you help me with this? Who We had... I think most of us do a little bit of everything. <laughs> Surgery went well, but now we have to see how she does the next few days. All right. We are going to be sending good vibes in her direction. We had journal makers. We had a couple quilters. Uh, we had people that do mixed media doodlers. Yeah. Barbara said, all of the above, quilters, stitchers, art junk journalers, art journaling, bookmaking. Yep. Yep, all of the above. So happy you were able to pop in too, Victoria. Miss seeing you, but I know you are spread all over the place. Sweet dreams. Fiona, you still awake, sipping your tea, or did you crash? <laughs> and some of us do a lot of all of those things. Exactly. I don't know that there was anybody there that only does one thing. Patty was making Frankenstein papers. Um, Barbara shared her soul collage and her doodles. Sharon shared her altered books and journals. Dee Dee shared some stuff she was working on for her don't freak out for Christmas. Um, Sue was doing, Oh, Sue, I've got to remember to go find that stitching thing that you shared with us. Inktober. That was it. Inktober tangles. Sue shared stitching. And of course we were all mesmerized by her beautiful, colorful fabric. She's got the best background. Yeah, no one does only one form of art. Yeah, I don't think so anymore. I don't think so. Not once YouTube came around, right? Sharon says, golly, mouse, journals, quilts. Terry is a master of all things creative. Vessels, baskets, paper crafts, mixed media, Christmas crafts. I know I'm missing things. And there is Big Mama. Sandy Moore is in the house. Yes. Yeah, Margaret, do one thing. What's that? Margaret showed these beautiful baskets she'd made, miniature baskets. She collects them, but she makes them too. And now I'm like thinking small. I mean, even smaller than this little guy. I want to make tiny things. Starting to droop. Well, I understand if you got to go to bed, Fiona. Yes, everybody was happy to see your face yesterday, Miss Sandy Moore. There's just so many. Yeah. Frank an artist making Frank an art. Yep. <laughs> Those baskets, I know, aren't they fabulous? And I'm just, I've, I've got all so much stuff drying. So this winter, I'm hoping to make a lot more basket stuff. I've been, um, I'm going to go out and collect some more carrots today. It dawned on me that they were long and round and I had trouble with them before. But if I treat them just like pine needles, I should be able to do something really interesting with them. Hello, Abby Sue. I don't think I've seen you here. Hello. Welcome. How are you doing today? What are you working on? Tell us about yourself. If you've been a secret squirrel in the past, we are happy to have you here. Michelle said, I like to do all different types of mixed media from our journals to torn collages to painting. Yeah. 
Oh, gosh, Sandy, that is the best news. Should I just got home from taking Big Daddy to the neurologist? Meds are the answer. Yay. Oh. Margaret said, I made small baskets because I don't have room to keep lots of large baskets that don't sell. Miniatures I have in a box. Get some good rest, Fiona. Wake up energized for working on those Christmas stockings tomorrow. Barbara says, I like that mouse. I'm a Franken artist. There aren't many places you could introduce yourself that way and people understand <laughs> so too. <gasps> Ooh, Sue's going to a willow basket weaving workshop on Saturday. I wanted to uh, grow some willow here, but I think I'm just gonna have to find somebody that has it growing and I can cut it. Mouse, you ever see any willow around someplace around town? Let me know so I can go harvest. <laughs> Abby Sue says, I rarely comment. Current work in progress is in hands is a mixed woven piece, woven fabric piece. Lots of random stitching happening now. Ooh, that sounds lovely. Yeah, Gail, she says, that's the problem with having several hobbies, crafts, not enough room to store everything. You got that right. So many things in such a short time. Yeah. Barbara says, I do have to say I'm completely daunted by all the Christmas coming out already. My inner Franken monster is saying not, not, not. Yeah, this year we might actually decorate a little bit for Christmas. We haven't the past few years because nobody comes out here, but I have a feeling my son and his fiance might come. Sandy says, Amy, or I'm sorry, Amy Sue. Amy Sue? My monitor might be going wonky. It's so wonderful to have you joining in the chat. It is. Yeah, the, the general conversation and always the giggles. That's what I love about the Zoom is we seem to be able to, well, you're not just looking at me, you know, we're looking at each other. And that's what was so wonderful about the Zooms is that we can see each other and, and laugh. <laughs> Journey wants to know, Barbara, are your Inktobers on Instagram? Terry says, Abby, Sue, welcome to our secret squirrel society. Yep. We love the secret squirrels. They're in the background doing all, doing all their thing, being super productive. This does tend to crimp up on itself, but when I'm offline, I'll unwind it. Yeah, it is going to take me a while to get to get through all of that, but I'm thinking maybe by Friday, if I can have it all cordage made by Friday. Hello, Lori, how are you doing today? Sandy said, Abby Sue, my motto check keeps changing. Oh, my auto keeps changing you to Amy. <laughs> Margaret, you're right. Margaret says in the Zoom, we always end up having a really good laugh. Yep. Barbara says, Sharon and anybody else, you can look up Soul Collage, all one word on YouTube. The originator is of it is Sina Frost. So there are a couple books by her. It can get complex, but I do it. But I do it complex. Ah. Kathy says, my husband says he'd like to retire in about a year and move south. He says we can get rid of most of our stuff. And I said, as long as we take all my craft stuff. Yes, yes. You know, I didn't have all this craft stuff when we left uh, San Jose and moved over the mountain here. And it was probably a good thing. It would have totally factored into what kind of a house we were looking for. Lori's still organizing. Nice. Barbara says, Journey, I've posted my Inktober tangles in a couple of places. I'll post on Susan's Facebook group. Yes, thank you. Isn't this a great blue, Lori? And it's going to go with, this is the bottom. And then it's going to, see now, Sharon, you got me thinking about my wall hangings again. It's like, no, this is going to be a vessel. Oh, Barbara says, I meant to say I don't do it complex. <laughs> and Fiber Ann says, Kathy, resizing instead of downsizing. Yes. 
Terry said, as a maker who does the bulk of sales in November and December, I'm in Christmas mode frequently on and off. Ah. <laughs> that makes more sense, though, Barbara. Yeah. The, and I mean, anything can be complex. You could. OK, let's see here. Let me put this down. You can see a difference in this is a lot, little bit more precise in my stitches and this is a lot less precise and they both work. Barbie says, I'm trying to figure out what to do with pine needles from my old home here in Arkansas. I don't think I want to try my hands at basketry. Any other ideas? Yes, I have one. Um, I don't have any. You'll have to use your imagination here. You can use pine needles and like little sticks and make little mini spirit sticks. So put a bunch of them together and tie fibers and things around them. Joanne said, no friends and few family members visit our house at Christmas. So I'm having fun decorating the front porch for people who pass by. That's a great idea. Sharon said, I think it would be a gorgeous wall hanging. It would be, but I know I've got in my head, I'm going to do a vessel. <laughs> Oh, Sue, great. You posted in my Facebook post about the embroidery I did in the group. Thank you. Barbara says, Terry, it does make me glad that I'm not trying to do sales, but your little angels are sweet. Yeah, they are. So what I'm doing on the twisting, um, do you need to see how I start the cordage? Let's see, where'd my scrap of that go? Okay, Barbara, here's how we start. Pine needles would be fun clusters to use in journals or gift cards, yeah. So to make the cordage, oh, Jessica says, we just moved and I was shocked by the amount of craft things, trying to use up tons of fabric now. So to start the cordage, you're gonna wanna just start twisting. Yeah, I knew what you meant, Barbara. Thank you, Soto. I think it'll look great. You're just going to start twisting, and you just keep twisting an opposite. I kind of tend to hold one side and then twist the other. It's okay, Sue. I can, I'm can. i going to go find your other link, and I'll, I'll put it there, too. You twist it until it starts to twist on itself. Twisting the night away. Oh, see, I was hearing twist and shout. And when you have that twist... That's how things get started, okay? And then when I'm when I've got that started and I'm holding my loop here, you're going to take the top, you've got two strands coming out here of your loop. The top one, you're going to twist away from you, okay? And then this bottom one gets tucked behind. Now that one gets twisted away and tucked behind. So there's a twist and tuck, twist and tuck, twist and tuck. That's all it is. Yeah, it's the same thing. And I tried to make it real complicated on myself the first few times I did it. And, you know, if you do it, if you give yourself a half an hour to do it, if your hands can handle it, um, then pretty soon it's like I'm not even looking at what I'm doing now. That's why I'm able to keep up with the chat so much more today. Sorry, Silk, for the vessel would be beautiful. Um, for this one. Oh, my goodness, Anne. But the knots... The knots, I just use a single strand. Yes, that is just one strand of fabric. Whoops, one strand on my knots. Um, I know that I want to use this up for this vessel first. And then I've got so many other pieces of fabric, so I could do sorry silk with it. Would it cause carpal tunnel? I think carpal tunnel is, is caused by anything that you do repetitively. Yeah. And I mean, you could, the thing about, okay, I'm going to, two things. I'm going to come back to the sorry silk. Um, 
anything that you do repetitively is going to cause you a carpal tunnel issue, which is why I'll do this for the live. And then I'm going to go off and do something else. And then I stop and I do this. The knotted stuff is, is really cool. The thing about the sari silk, okay, this, the bottom is made, these are about a, a half an inch cut strips of cotton sheeting that has been uh, colored with diluted acrylic paint. When you do the twist in here, it, it's not very wide, so it takes a lot, I mean a lot, to get to this point. I mean, the ball of strips that I had when I to do this was probably, I don't know, probably this big across. So just keep in mind, the sari silk is even finer. Um, if you're not twisting it over a uh, rope or clothesline or something like that, it's going to take a long time. And yeah, when, you know, I do this when I'm on my own, you know, when I'm not live, I'll do it. And then I stop. And this is a really good exercise just to get something different going. You have three pieces of a sari silk bundle left. Oh. Yeah. And, you know, I learned this at the, before the pandemic started from Alice Fox who's an artist that I just absolutely admire. And now I just want to do it with so many things. I, I did a lot with grasses in the spring. Now I understand the process a little more. So I'm anxious to do more with the vines that I have saved. Do it with raffia, but I love doing it with fabric because it's a great way to use up old pieces um, of sheets and things maybe that you've painted. Sharon says, haha, and I seem to think that on a daily basis. Isn't it fabul fabulous to always be learning about new things? Life is truly magical. Absolutely. And the thing is, is you could probably watch three or four people um, not in chat link above. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Terry. Any tips for cutting your strips to do this? Um, Barbie, there are many different ways to do this. <laughs> Susan's version is just to cut them about the same length and rip. That's what I did. Leah said, I will iron all my sari silk and keep all the soft, fluffy threads that need clipping off. Oh, yes, because that's what makes this kind of cordage. All those little threads makes beautiful cordage. So you could mix another fiber. Absolutely. You could take some wool roving and mix it in here. You know, Joanne, I was thinking about arthritis, but then I also remember, you know, when I injured my finger last year and I was going to PT for it, um, and I, I told her about making cordage and how frustrated I was that at the time I couldn't make cordage, she said that this would be a really good exercise for me. So I don't know whether some arthritis would be, some exercise is good for arthritis, I don't know. I iron my sorry silk before I use it. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Margaret says, Mouse, I've been making cordage for a while now, as well as other similar stuff, and I don't so far have carpal tunnel, and I am 81 years old. Yep. Let's see. Uh, well, not that I'm going to leave it like this, but I could decide to just... Oh, Leah, that's very smart. She says, I just pull it through my flat iron. You know, I could suddenly start twisting it to a different color here. But yeah, it's a great way to use up some roving. Margaret says, I find silk the softest to use and synthetics are far too hard on the hands. Yep. Yeah, I love the idea of the flat iron. Now, because I'm doing cordage, I'm not worried about all this stuff that's wrinkled. But, you know, if I was going to do something else with it, I definitely would do that. I would iron it. Barbara says, when I hurt my hands slow stitching a couple years ago, the PT said it was repetitive motion holding too tight in a non-ergonomic position. 
So if I pay attention, I'm good. Ah. Margaret said, I do have arthritis in my hands and any of that stuff seems to help with that. Yeah, I think so too. I think the movement is good because I think it's the non-movement. I know when my hand was still, my finger was still healing, when I would get up in the morning after not moving it, it would be very stiff. And then as soon as I started moving it around, I mean, it's still, you know, got some stiffness in it. Yeah, Sue is reminding you, Barbie, just rip the fabric strips, don't cut. Um, you will find people that will tell you to, to cut it on the bias. I do not have the patience for that. <laughs> I just don't do it. I just do it my own way. You know, learn the rules and then only adapt them if they're going to work for you. And I think Soto said something about she wasn't going to let arthritis rule her. And I love that. Gail said, I already had carpal tunnel surgery in both wrists decades ago. I'm 66, but my previous profession in crocheting a lot really put a strain on my wrists. Yeah, I know I had a lot of problems with my wrist when I was writing all the time. When your piece gets too short like this, is that what you mean? Use a rotary cutter if you know how to use one properly. Sue, I wish I could sit in the room with you and have you show me how to do mine properly because even with a rotary cutter, and a metal ruler, I still go all over the place. So if this is what you mean, Barbara, let me know. Sandy said, Susan is a teacher of rebellious crafting. I'm signing up. Yep. Then you need to add something new. I can get tons of sheets at the pay by the pound bins. Oh my goodness. I wish we had a pay by the pound bin. Wow. That would be so cool. Yeah. And then you can, you know, use it as they are. Okay. I'll show you next. Um, you can dye it with whatever you want to ahead of time or, okay, here's another thought I had making one in a solid color and then just hitting it with spray paints and distress paints. Cause it's not going to be worn, you know, washing machine or anything like that. Just paint it after it's all done. You could do stuff like that. Your hands will let you know for sure if you'll be working on that project. I think that's why we have so many crafts. That's my excuse. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's good because the variety is good. All right. So when you got to join, you have this piece right here where the, where the twist is or bleach. Exactly. Okay. So you're going to take your new piece and you're just going to overhang it just a little bit here. Now you can, you can be really nice and neat about it. This one, I'm not worrying because any of the little pieces that are sticking out, you can either cut off later or you can stitch those in as you're stitching them on the vessel. Dip dyeing, absolutely. Bleach would work, absolutely bleach would work. Dip dyeing a finished vessel would be really cool, Sue. Jessica says, I've got pain in my thumb joint. Going to try compression gloves and see if that helps. Ah. Barbara, I love the idea of a rotary cutter. I'm just a klutz. I have a couple of them. Sandy says, Soto, I'm, I'm on that page. My mind has to be on board or I'll get bored. Yeah. Now, if it really bothers you to have that little thing here, then you can just tuck it right back down in it. Yeah, so many ideas, right? Your mind is exploding, right? I love it. Margaret says, yes, the variety. That's why gardening is a good exercise. Lots of different movements. Yeah. And it all it all helps. So I've got um, another vessel that I'm going to start, and I'm probably going to make cordage for that too so that I can go back and forth. I've got that, Barbara. I've got the big ruler and I've got the nice um, Ulfa cutter and I put it down on my cutting mat and my hand slips <laughs> or get the seam ripper on the tail. Yep. Or you can, you know, if you're going to hang something, once this is, you know, picture this has been on the vessel. Okay. And you have it hanging out there. It looks really cool like that. Or you can hang beads, tie beads to it or something. 
Yeah, I think I'm just really, I'm just really uncoordinated. That's all there is to it. I could dance on roller skates. I can't dance on two feet. So I don't know what the deal is. Soto says, Sue Brown, that's what I tell my husband when he says to me, another crafting project you're starting? New projects means to him, give me money, honey. <laughs> oh, Gail, thank you. I'm so glad I'm not alone. I thought it was just me with the rotary cutter. It seems like it should be so simple. No, I'm right-handed, Michelle. Although I think I might be doing this the left-handed way. I know, Journey, so much inspiration here. <gasps> Oh, that's a great idea, Barbara. She's wondering if she can use the llama fluff she's got. She's got so many bags of it. Barbara says there are little sticky things you can put underneath the quilting ruler to help hold it set steady. But yeah, I just rip. I kind of angle the rotary into the ruler to keep it from wandering. Hmm. Angie, you've got it too, the pay by a pound in Vegas. I've got so many awesome sheets, tablecloths, shoes, clothing, et cetera. Oh my. I have not been in a thrift shop in probably three years. But Thursday, oh gosh, that's tomorrow. I'm going to the orthopedic guy for my knees and it's right across the street from one of my favorite thrift shops and I may just have to go in and see, but they don't have by the pound stuff. Oh, Mouse says I've put... Um, athletic tape on my ruler. Wait a minute, I missed something. Hi, Margaret. She says, thank you for this live and for the Vessos video earlier this week. I hope you'll get to show how the sides take shape. Yes, I will. This is what I'm making the cordage for to go up the sides. This is where the bottom is. And then I'll be going up the sides with this cordage. Yeah, I do use it standing up. I think I may have to go in. If it's not really crowded, I may have to go in tomorrow, right? Ah, oh, gosh, you guys, you're killing me. Pay by the pound. Oh. But, you know, if I go in, they do sometimes have a paper bag day where you get, you can fill a bag for a buck, but not always. Uh, okay, see, Ann, Ann says... If I, uh, Gail, wait a minute here. Let me go back. Gail says it's not the ruler that is moving, y'all. It's the rotary cutter that moves, probably. Anne said if I'm cutting 12 inches or shorter pieces of fabric, like for my fabric coils, I use a stabilizing fabric spray and paper cutter instead of my rotary cutter. I killed my paper cutter by cutting, um, well, okay, probably wasn't supposed to be cutting leather, leather but I did. <laughs> A dollar twenty-four a pound at my store. Oh, Barbara, you're killing me. You're killing me. If I could do that and get green fabric, uh, Michelle, yeah, I'm with you. I rip. I agree, Margaret. It's so relaxing to make cordage. And I'm I'm having a blast because I don't have to look at what I'm doing until I'm doing the joins. I can just watch this. So I think for me, you know, Anne, I read your thing about the spray and the paper cut and all that, and I realize. I'm just too impatient. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a no. Well, the lighter leather was okay, but I have this really, really thick leather that was like for chaps. And it's, I got to figure out something to make, make with it. It's too hard to really, I can't make cordage with it. I can't cut it into strips. I'm not sure what to do with it. Maybe I should just stick it on Craigslist. Sandy, maybe you should. Maybe you should. Greens and browns. That's what I'm looking for. Greens and browns. Mouse said, I guess my rotary is also a bit dull, so I have to put more pressure to cut so I can't stray easily. Yeah. Yeah, L.A. I'm in Central California, so I'm, I'm quite a ways from the Santa Cruz Mountains to L.A. That's an all-day trip one way. I'll send you green reclaimed fabric if you also take llama floof. <laughs> Hey, you know what, Barbie? Let me ask um, my weavers out here what they'd charge me to weave some of it with. And then maybe I will pay you for shipping some llama floof to me. I can't believe how much you got. Have you guys heard Barbie's wonderful story about all the llama floof she got? She took a little baggie thinking she was going to get a little bit of it. 
Oh, Soto, you're in Southern California, so you could do pay by the pound in L.A., huh? I'm up in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Hey, Angie, do you where else do you get other than Hobby? I know you shop Hobby Lobby a lot. Do you get um, your fibers? I've been looking. Terry said, can you sharpen a rotary blade on a knife sharpener? Hmm, I don't know. I just buy new blades. I do think a new blade does help. Marissa said, leather is wonderful for upcycling clothing as patches and embellishments. This stuff is so thick, though, it doesn't really even bend. I have soft leather for patches, which is great. But this leather that I've got, and it's all black, and I can't really soften it. I, I'm just... It was an impulse buy, and I didn't think about it. Terry says, I use upcycled leather on barrettes. Can you use this really hard, stiff stuff, Terry? Because if so, I'll send you some. Sandy, what do you cut yours with? I mean, I'd have to take mine someplace to a shop that could cut it. All right, time to put another piece on. Margaret said, I would love some llama floof, but the postage to Australia would be prohibitive. I know the postage to Australia is ridiculous. I tell you, you have leather shears. Oh, Soto, I hear you. Introvert, so LA is totally out. Gotcha. We couldn't, my husband and I are both major introverts. And I tell you what, getting out of San Jose was the best thing we ever did. Mouse said, Terry, I have a rotary blade sharpener. It's a round thing that you kind of twist. Oh, interesting. And Fiber Ann said, there is a company that recycles rotary blades and you can send old ones and buy new ones for pretty cheap. Wow. Okay, wait a minute. I need to mark this, Angie. Angie said, I shop knit picks for my roving and Etsy for my Tisdale sheep locks. And then I dye it all with cake dye and vinegar. Okay. Okay. Soto said, I didn't even know they had one here in California. Yeah, I didn't either. Philippa said to soften dark leather, use neat's foot oil for light color, use linseed. Thank you, Philippa. Hard leather is good for tool work, like on saddles. Sometimes they draw on it and make art. Yeah, I have um, I have painted it, and I have also done um, plaster casting on it because it's really nice and stiff, but I just have so much of it. I should just see here locally if there's somebody that can use it. Fiber Ant said, I had one of those sharpeners. Didn't like it much. <laughs> Sue said, I tried recycled, refinished rotary blades, but have not had good experiences with them. My blade sharpener isn't really all that great either. Yeah, I just have bought new ones. Barbara says, it makes me wonder if our thrift shops have a buy the pound opportunity. And, you know, and maybe we should suggest it to them, Barbara. I don't know. Mouse, if you ever see anything like that in our area, Mouse lives near me. So please let me know. Could be because I end up nicking the blades, not merely making. Yeah, I've done that too um, when I use my metal rulers. <laughs> Soto says we need an introvert day. I know. There are a lot of introverted, introverted artistic types. Terry would love for Ann to post that company in the group when you come across it. Yeah, I just decided that anything that requires that kind of precision is probably not an art project that I'm going to be real happy with. Margaret said, Sue Brown, I always nick the blades too. Forget to put the pins out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't use pins very well either. I'm just, you know, this, everything I'm doing artistically is pretty much self-taught. You know, I take classes and ignore what the, the classes say and just do my own thing. Sandy says, Soto, is that where we don't get together and feel good about it? <laughs> Soto agrees with you. Yes. Ah, 
Fiber Ann said the company that lets you buy Ulfa blades or generic. I always buy the true Ulfa. Okay. Yeah. I would love it if you would post that. Marissa said you can do some Harache shoes, cut, do some holes and stitch with soft leather as cordage. Ooh, that's a thought. I think I just need to see if there's somebody around here that wants it. Maybe I'll pop it up on Craigslist. Although lately I find that less and less I do things on Craigslist and more and more they just go to Goodwill. <laughs> Sandy says, Soto, you plan it and I'll RSVP my decline. I love it. I love it. An introvert's party. What if they gave a party and nobody came and then they all cheered in quiet at home without having to people? Whoops, forgetting to twist every so often. Well, I'm, I'm making more progress on this today than I thought I would, so that's good. So I need to start going up the sides. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do it rather than try and do a recap of this. I'll just do a real quick new cordage video. <laughs> and uh, put, put that one up tomorrow and that'll give me a chance to finish the cordage. And then maybe Friday I'll be coming up the sides. Oh, Barbie, I love it. She said, I would want to come and intend to come, and at the last minute panic and make an excuse not to come. That happens all the time. Yep, yep. Sue says, the COVID pandemic was an introvert's idea of heaven, at least of the introverts in my house. Same here. That's why we have chat. I think that is what chat rooms are, introvert parties. Yep. Headache is definitely much better. Thank you, Lori. Yeah, the pandemic was great for, you know, my husband and I are both definite introverts. And uh, then when he discovered he wasn't going to have to go back into the office, even after the pandemic, it was like, yeah, that's heaven. Yeah, the headache's still kind of there, but nothing like it was. I can concentrate, which is good. Y'all need to be super proud of Barbie if I actually go to this class reunion. We will. We will cheer. Sue said, uh, I'm the only person I knew that enjoyed the lockdown. Glad I'm not alone. Oh, absolutely not. Gail said, yep, the pandemic didn't bother my husband and I at all. Excuse to stay home. Yep. Barbara said, yes, we have the wedding of the century coming up next weekend, and I wish we could decline. Oh, yeah, that's hard. That's hard. I know um, social stuff, I just don't. We're not ready for it. Given half an excuse and I just head home. Yeah. I haven't gone to any of my class reunions. My next one coming up will be my 50 years. And I probably won't go to that one. I keep in touch with people that I went to school with on Facebook. And that's enough for me. That's why I love YouTube. I love the Zooms. I really enjoy Zoom. Um, I get my social interaction from that. I don't need to see people face to face. Terry said, the only thing that I missed was teaching painting classes. Yeah, I bet. You're so good at that. And people really enjoy your painting classes. All right, let's get another one on. This is booking. I love it. Lori said, I am still in lockdown, not getting out either. <laughs> Barbara said, I told them I'm taking my own car, participating in the surface service and coming home. Two people. Yep. The pandemic was horrible, but as artists, we were well prepared, plenty to do, loved it. That's right, Angie. <laughs> Jessica, yes. She said, I put off having lunch with someone five times because I just wanted to be home and I genuinely like this person. That's it, exactly. My book group, they wanna meet in person at one gal's house, even outside. And it's like, no, I'm, I'm okay being here, seeing with you guys on Zoom. Small classes have always been fun. I don't mind them either. I've taught junk journaling classes and Mandela classes and journaling classes. Yeah. 
Philippa says we have to take the ferry next week to see the Grandies. It's a bit anxiety creating people. Oh, all the people. Yeah. On the ferry in close quarters. Yikes. I mean, I get nervous still just going to the doctor's office, sitting in the waiting room and there's a whole bunch of people there. It's just, oh, it's crazy. Here, let me get this join going. Fiber Ann says, brain overload, feeling faint, must go eat. Thanks for everything. Yeah, I'm about done here. Go eat. I'm going to go eat too. Soto says, hubby is not an introvert, needs my time. Darn, love spending time here. <laughs> love spending time here, meeting you all. See you again. Bye-bye, Soto. I'm just about done here. I usually finish up in uh, about half hour. Sandy said, um, Wait a minute here. I missed something. Uh, so, oh, Sandy said, I thought I was being punished. I hated it. Now my introvert friends are cozy in the cave and I'm alone in the sunshine. Oh, Gail says, Philippa, last Saturday was the first birthday party for one of my grandsons we attended without masks on. It was a bit anxiety ridden. Yeah. Bye, Soto. Haven't seen them in two years. Yeah. And my mom was here, you know, for that week and she had to travel on the plane and then she was in the hotel every night. So that made me nervous. Luckily, everybody was fine. Joanne, you are so not alone. Margaret says, I have my art in my garden. I see my daughter occasionally and my son lives here. I see my best friend occasionally and that's enough for me. Yep. Oh, thank you, Anne. She posted the Rotary Cutter link on Facebook. Barbara says, Gail, I'm wearing a mask to the wedding of the century. We still have more than 100 COVID cases a week in our area. Yeah. Margaret said, I live on a community, so sometimes I bump into someone. I go for my daily walk. Yep. All right, people, my voice is telling me I am done. But look at this. Look at this. This was fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Michelle. I had a good time. I made lots of progress. Everybody had wonderful ideas we were sharing with one another. I love it. Next week is another Zoom next Tuesday. Um, it will be morning for me. So it will be a time for um, people on the other side of the world for the UK folks to join us. Good, Barbara. I'm glad you got yours and you get your flu shot too. Love seeing everybody. Always great to hang with you. Thank you. Hope you all left a thumbs up. And if you can leave a comment after this, um, after I shut down, it always does send a message to YouTube to say you guys had a good time. Oh, and pizza. Yum. Thumbs. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next week.